Hi everyone, Tanya Hertz here. We're going to be talking tonight about taxes and we're going to jump right into the tax slides. We're going to cover what you need to do to pay taxes, what you need to keep track of. We'll talk a little bit about sales taxes, common deductions for food businesses. And we'll also talk a little bit about profit and pricing. Okay, so taxes. As a business owner, it's important that you understand your federal, your state, and your local tax requirements. This is going to help you when you file your taxes. It'll help you file your taxes accurately and make your payments on time. Remember, if you are operating a business out of your home, you can count all of those expenses that go into the overhead of maintaining your home as expenses, which reduces the amount of tax that you need to pay for the government. Remember also, if you're in a, a household where one person, let's say, works for a standard type of a job where they're getting getting taxes taken out each week or each month on their of their paycheck and another person has their own business they're out of the home you can offset the income or the money that you pay in taxes on one of the businesses that come out of each you know each month in taxes with your expenses from your home business if you're filing taxes jointly so that can be huge that can be huge that could mean that if you have enough expenses and you're really careful about recording all of your expenses it could mean getting back tens of thousands of dollars at the end of the year where other people would just pay that to the government so you really 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 need to be careful about paying you know keeping track of the taxes and paying what you legally should pay and not not just like every other you know working schmuck right this is why businesses they have an unfair advantage legally in this country so take advantage of that unfair advantage yourself as a business owner right it's there everybody else does it you should do it <laughs> okay so the business structure that you've chosen for your business is going to determine how much you pay in taxes and how you pay taxes remember we talked about the legal structures and some some are passed through corporations like if you're a sole proprietor you pay money on the on the income that the business earns they're they're joined together or a corporation you might have to pay taxes twice you might have to pay taxes first as that the business earns and then again when you take money out as the business owner so make sure that you are really careful about the structure meet with a mentor if you have not yet well it doesn't matter if you have chosen the business structure you can change it just because you're a sole proprietorship today doesn't mean that tomorrow you can't be an llc or an s corp or, or something else so I highly recommend meet with an advisor to help with this. And remember, though, that every time you change the structure of your business, you do have to pay additional taxes at the federal and state level. Remember also that sales taxes, if you if you need to pay, pay sales taxes on the um, no services in the state of California, you have to pay sales tax on. But if you're selling something tangible, good, you do have to pay sales tax on that. And it depends on the area that you're in, the amount of sales tax that you have to pay. So make sure that you are accounting for that and keeping that, keeping good records and paying that regularly. The government will, the state of California will uh, request that you pay quarterly sales taxes if you, if it looks like you're going to have sales taxes to pay. And so it's really important that you stay on top of it. Do not let that get behind because they'll come after you, especially if you have, like if you're sole proprietorship or some type of a ownership where it's not separate the, yourself from the business. So make sure that you make sure that you know the difference. Direct and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are taxes that the taxpayer pays directly to the government. Indirect taxes can be passed on or shifted to another person by the group or, or the person that owns it. So it's important that you understand the differences and that you, you pay your taxes. Right? Tax avoidance is definitely... <laughs> Take advantage of all legal ways of reducing your taxable amounts, <laughs> all legal ways. You don't want to avoid paying legal taxes that are due, right? So reduce your taxes. Don't avoid paying what you actually owe. Okay. So income taxes are direct taxes. Income taxes include wages, salaries from employment, tips, dividends, capital gains, disbursements from IRAs, alimony payments, social security benefits. All of these are direct income taxes that you need to pay tax on. Another kind of direct tax is a property tax. These are, well, they can be, uh, they can be combined with your mortgage payment if you've set it up that way, or if not, they'll do twice a year. And, um, we also, we also pay direct taxes on vehicles, especially in the state of California. There's other types of direct 
taxes. Indirect taxes, however, are taxes like payroll taxes. And this is really important that you understand, and or sales taxes, that you understand and that you are calculating correctly, especially once you get to the point where you are hiring employees, if you are hiring employees. However, take advantage of the fact that still today, still in California today, you can employ 1099. Well, they're not actually employed. You can you can contract with a 1099, not employees, but workers who work for themselves and then pay their own taxes. And then you don't have to worry about things like payroll taxes. But if you do hire an employee to work for you, you need to, you need to collect taxes on their behalf. So these are withheld from your paychecks by the employer. And you pay these directly to the government. Biggest payroll tax is FICA, which goes to your Social Security, your Medicare. You also have other state and federal unemployment tax that you need to pay. It's essentially unemployment insurance that you're, you're paying for when you're if when and when or if your employee is unemployed. Again, this is really important. You think about how you're bringing people on to help you. If they're an owner of the business or have equity in the business, that it might be smarter to not bring them on as an employee, but to you know bring them on as an owner so you don't have to pay them payroll taxes or pay them as sub or contractors rather, or independent contractors, or you know independent workers, if possible. But there are rules that go along with that, so you need to make sure that you're doing this right. You don't want to, you don't want to get yourself into trouble and, and for example, bring somebody on, let's say, as a delivery driver, and you say, okay, I'm going to have a delivery driver deliver food for me, and I'll just pay this person per delivery and not as an employee, just as a gig, right? Gig worker in the gig economy as an independent contractor. That would be ideal, right? Ideal, just 20 bucks per gig or whatever it is. But you need to be very, very, very careful about doing that. You need to make sure that you're following all of the all of the required laws. If, if you're telling the person what they need to wear, if you're telling the person exactly how to do all of the all of the things that need to be done as part of the job, that's an employee. That is not a gig worker. That's not an independent contractor. It's not a freelancer. And if you pay them as such and don't take out payroll taxes, you're violating many, many laws and you can get yourself in trouble. And that's a good way to end your business quickly, right? So make sure that you're, you're doing it right. Sales tax are another way that small business owners get themselves into a lot of trouble because even though you're collecting that sales tax on behalf of the government, it needs to be then paid to the government and needs to be paid regularly. And this is why it's so important that you keep very good, good books, right? That you spend a lot of time working in the books of your business. So sales taxes are collected at the time of the point of sale, at the time of purchase, and then they're held by you as the business owner, and then they're paid to the government on behalf of the, on behalf of the purchaser. And you don't pay additional tax on things like wholesale purchases from the manufacturer because sales taxes aren't collected on those, right? Sales taxes can be applied federal, state, and local. And so depending on where your business is, is where you actually file for your business license, will make a difference in the amount of money that you need to pay. So be really careful about thinking about where you're actually starting that business. Um, and whether, whether or not you need to actually pay sales tax. Remember, in California, you don't have to pay sales tax on services, just uh, on goods. So a little bit about standard and itemized deductions. The IRS allows for standard deductions for certain pairs or certain industries based on your circumstances. And the standard deduction very often can be more than the itemized deduction. However, this is typically not true when you are a small business owner because the itemized deductions, if you're careful about keeping good records and, and, and counting what you legally can count as, as, a, as a deductible expense, it's typically a lot more when you do itemized deductions. And remember, you can offset the amount of money that you have to pay the government in taxes if you have two sources of, of income. If you have one job that, like, like I said before, that where they're taking out the taxes for you and another of your own business. This is why I always tell all of my students throughout history, always own your own business. Always own your own business so that you can deduct any expenses that are both personal and business expenses. So charitable contributions. So if you're giving like a restaurateur who's, who's doing a food benefit for, for a cause and you can deduct every single expense that goes along with that. All those charitable contributions are direct deductions, but keep track of everything. Take pictures, keep track of everything. 
any business expense, education expenses, anything that you need to make that business happen. You can only take the standard deduction or itemize, not both. <laughs> so keep good track of everything so that at the end of the year, you can decide what you want to do. And if you're careful, you should be able to write off a lot more itemized and standard deductions. Tax credits are different than deductions. Ta deductions reduce the total amount of taxable income before the taxes are calculated. It doesn't come right off the amount of tax that you owe. It comes off the total amount that you've earned. So when you're taking a deduction of, let's say you, I don't know, spent $100 on some charitable contribution and, and you owed, let's say, let's say you owed $500 in taxes. Okay. That hundred dollars does not come off of the $500 that you owe in taxes. It comes off of the total amount that you earned before they calculated those taxes. So if you earned $10,000, then you could you would reduce the amount that you earned by one hundred dollars, not the tax by one hundred dollars. That I hope that makes sense, right? So you're you're taking deductions from your taxable income, not your tax amount. Now a tax credit, on the other hand, comes off of the total tax bill. So if you had five hundred dollars due in taxes and you had a tax credit of hundred dollars, that comes right off of that five hundred dollars, and so you would only owe four hundred dollars, right? And credits, obviously, you can see now why credits are preferable to deductions, because even if the dollar amount of the deduction is higher than the tax credit, it, it's still preferable to take typically a deduction because it comes right off that end amount you own. So tax return is what you file each year with the IRS that gives your adjusted gross income, your expenses, and your other financial information. If you do a good job keeping track of everything all year long, this should be a, a, not a horribly painful time of year. You know, it doesn't, April doesn't have to be the, the worst uh, month of the year when you're a business owner, if you're really good at keeping good records on all of your, for all of your taxes. So everything that we're doing, all of these, all of these forms that we're teaching you how to make, they're ultimately, you use them for all the things that we talked about, but then really for your taxes at the end of the year. So, you know, having these good financials is going to make life really easy at the end of the year. You can, tax returns will also include things like deductions, student loan interest, healthcare coverage, any IRA contributions. If you had any home, any business use of your home, you get to write all that out, any business expense, any charitable contribution, and then what's left over, you actually take that back in a tax refund. Now, as a business owner, don't think that a tax refund is just a dream that you'll never see again, especially if you are in a household where you're filing jointly and one of the people has a job and the other person has a business or like me, I've always, well, not always, but for the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, I've had a paid job. And then I also always have a business at the same time. And so I can write off all of my business expenses, my legitimate business expenses, and then all the money that, it, that they took out in taxes, I, I get back at the end of the year in a refund and get a lot more back than if I didn't have that, didn't have that, you know, business. So everybody have a business. Here's some resources for you for filing your taxes and yeah, get, get, get working on it now. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and we are going to finish our pricing and profitability video after this. So bye everyone. Take care.